Hi, Kim Grant here with Taylor Hewitt Healthcare Strategies. Recently, we heard from Deb Sheets, Director of Service Line Marketing at Dayton Children's Hospital, how she's helping the specialists there navigate this new brave world of telehealth. As we all know, telehealth will probably remain a big player in this learning to live with COVID era that we're about to enter. With that said, she also participated in the webinar that Tiller Hewitt held on relaunch and recovery, where we shared some of the tools that Cleveland Clinic uses along these lines. So Deb took it upon herself to customize, if you will, a tip sheet from the Cleveland Clinic on empathy and virtual visits. And then she is sharing that with the providers at Dayton Children's and in the community, along with the video that she created. And so without further ado, here's that video and also you can click onto our website and take a look at the tips as well. And maybe you can customize and use it in your organization too. Take it away, Deb. Hi everyone, Deb here from Dayton Children's Hospital with some information on empathy in virtual visits. So I've got some information to share, courtesy of the Cleveland Clinic, who have long been leaders in this practice of putting patients first. The leadership at the clinic recognized um, long ago that our world is intensely focused on the patient experience, but providers often felt left out. So they developed a tool for the many, many um, seasoned physicians out there to help them intuitively form relationships with their patients and to help them understand the benefits of this mode of communication. The model is called the R-E-D-E -E model, and it's an acronym for the three primary phases of relationship building, establishment, development, and engagement. There's 10 key points. I'm gonna break them down for you really quickly in two minutes or less. So number one, here we go. Um, convey value and respect with the welcome. People form first impressions very quickly and we wanna set the stage for a communication that's built on trust. You wanna make sure that you're seeing the patient first um, as a person and second as a patient. And that's gonna create a safe space and you'll have a open exchange of information that way. Number two, introduce the technology. So orient patients to the benefits of a virtual visit as well as the difference from an in-person visit. You might wanna let them know, I've got a computer next to me and from time to time I may be looking away so that I can take notes because I wanna make sure that I capture your story. Number three, collaboratively set the agenda. And this is really important. So you wanna start off by saying, what are you hoping that we can address today? What questions do you have? How do you want um, your visit to go today? Um, that way you can make sure that you're using your time efficiently if you're both on the set, same page and set the agenda. So number four, demonstrate empathy. Recognize emotional cues and respond to them in the moment. We know that empathic statements are therapeutic, they can improve outcomes, and um, they also save time in a visit. So saying things like, I'm here to help you through this, I'm sorry that I can't be there in person, but we're going to work on this together, can be very helpful. Number five, allow the patient to tell their story in their own words. So encourage them by saying, tell me more about your chief concerns. Tell me more about what worries you. Um, and as we allow them to feel heard, we're going to um, make sure that we can meet their needs. Number six, engage in reflective listening. So repeating back the story as you've heard it helps uh, you and the patient to be on the same page um, and move forward. Number seven, share diagnosis and information in the context of a patient's perspective. So you want to identify what is most important to this patient. What are their biggest concerns? What are their goals? And then when you start talking about treatment planning and about diagnosis, make sure that all comes back around um, and it lets them know how this is going to impact those goals and those concerns. Number eight, collaboratively develop the treatment plan. So we know patients are going to be more motivated and they're going to be more confident in their ability to manage their health if um, they've been invited to share their preferences um, and their ideas. So we want to make sure to incorporate their ideas and their preferences into the plan. Number nine, have the patient repeat back um, what they understand. And this is just an opportunity to correct any uh, misunderstandings and fill in the gaps before the visit actually ends. And then number 10, which is the last step, is provide closure. So patients are going to be looking to you 
um, for a sign that the visit is over. So we wanna give them a clear signal. So you might wanna say, it's time for us to wrap up our visit today. I'm so very thankful that you did not wait to share this concern. I'm gonna put a note in your chart um, and I hope that you had a great visit and we'll consider a virtual visit again sometime. So 10 key points, you can find more information on the Cleveland Clinic website, or you can Google the R-E-D-E -E acronym and all kinds of great stuff out there. And I think we're also going to share some collaterals with you. So best of luck in your virtual visits, and we'll talk to you next time.